back everyone. Um, we are not gonna follow this route because as I said earlier, there's a very steep curb there and it is not the way I want it to go. So, oh, interesting, it continued automatically. I didn't, I didn't even have to tap continue on route. But yeah, um, I would like to mention um, that I was <laughs> totally wrong on waypoints this morning when I was complaining about that. I just, I guess I just didn't, something didn't click right for me on how it was used and I just didn't pay attention and obviously I was using it wrong. Uh, it, I still think it could have a few tweaks to make it a little bit more intuitive. I, I feel like when you add a point, it should automatically go in front. And it just wasn't doing that for me this morning. And maybe I'm just doing something wrong, perhaps. Uh, oh, look at there. I can totally see that yellow speed bump now. Uh, like It visualized it on the screen. So I could see it in previous updates, but it was, it was never very fast. And there's a big pothole here. I'm gonna see if I can see this because there's no way I'm driving over that. Yeah, it's gonna... <laughs> absolutely not. Um, yeah, absolutely not. There's a giant pothole right there. I'm not gonna be doing that. Feet, oh, the lights are back on. Oh, we caught that by, by um, just uh, I guess lucky in this case because that's really interesting to see about full slow driving with a um, man stoplight. I don't know. I from for me like that's the thing. The camera should theoretically, like, if we bring up this camera, obviously you can't see the front cameras, but like, if you were to see a person say back where this telephone pole is, you could should. The camera should be able to see high enough resolution data to tell if the hands are moving. Like, you know, if you up like this, like this, it should be able to tell those differences. And, like, moving your hand, they, like, wave me on. I didn't recognize, I wasn't sure right away, so I didn't want to be, like, go out in traffic until I was positive that he was telling me to go on. Um, and so it's kind of a pain to, uh, even for humans, to do that. So yeah, it, that was a um, definite edge case as I haven't personally had one of those for a very long time. Now turn left onto 7th Avenue. So I'm glad we caught that. See how it turns here. It should be go. Oh, it's still stopping for yellows. So I'm pressing it through. I am still pressing accelerator. <laughs> now turn right. Um, did I disengage? I do not like that. If I disengage that easily, that's that's a problem. Um, but yeah, it's, so I guess I, I don't know if I want to count that or not because technically I didn't mean to disengage it. If I did, uh, it seems it's really hard to tell because it, that that ding, I'm pretty sure as it goes into um, a cruise control, uh, and it's just kind of a new sound you're gonna ha have to get used to. So yeah, we're gonna go in the lows and come back out and go to Harris Teeter. Hey, let's go on to the grocery store, everyone. It wants to take, it wants to take 64. We're gonna go, see if we can make it go the back way. That's a little bit more interesting route than going on 64. That's just kind of a four lane divided highway there. There you go. This gives a, give us a lot more variation. That should use the camera. Not counting on that. That not counting that disengagement. Uh, that was my uh, lack of awareness uh, that caused that. Let's see if it's going to read the speed limit signs on this road coming up. This is one of the roads in Hendersonville where it just does not read the speed limit sign. Not this one. This is 35. I read that one correctly, right? As we passed the sign, I read it correctly. But there are signs up here. I believe it's 20 mile an hour up ahead. Uh, the signs are normal speed limit signs, but posted to a telephone pole. And the car never reads them. And of course, 35 and a 20, you know, is a little bit fast. <laughs> I like that it's staying a little bit further right. This is how I would have drove on this, so that's good. 
that needs to slow down for the four-way stop here. Of course, there's a person crossing the road. And they can easily see that. It has not changed the speed, so I'm going to change it to at least 25 here. Though I don't believe it's seen... Okay, for some reason it got way too he hesitant there. Uh, where is the speed limit side? It is on this telephone pole right, right here, you can see it. So if it changes to 20, then we know it's read it correctly, right here. Did not read it. Turn left onto Maple Street. Did not read that sign still. And there's another one right here. Still did not read that one. Go ahead and press the camera button. Now turn left onto Maple Street. This is an interesting road to go on because it's a cobblestone. There are not many of these in the south, that's for sure. I think up north you have them quite, quite all over the place in the older towns. You have these type of roads, brick roads. Did I say cobblestone? Yeah, definitely brick. Um, in 500 but, uh, feet, turn right onto 5th Avenue East. Wednesday Rail, that's exactly how I would have gone across that type of, in terms of lane sitting. It needs, to, it needs to look further up ahead. That's something it does not seem to do well. It doesn't look further up ahead. Okay, I'm pressing it. There's a car behind me. And yeah. It seems to be really hesitant going through intersections with this version. For whatever reason, it just it seems to not want to commit. Like, right here. It's just not committing. There's no one around me, so I'm gonna kinda let it do its thing. Besides being really cautious at the beginning, that did really well. It seems to be st stopping better at stop signs, but again, really cautious for some reason. After every stop, it's just like, it pauses like to do a double take. Like, did I see something? It's really uh, odd behavior. It seems to be fairly consistent like yeah again did it right here as well every single stop seems to just kind of creep out a little bit look both ways and go and maybe it's learning that from humans humans have to look both ways again and the car doesn't need to do that I suppose maybe it's it's kind of a gray area should the car do that should the car behave like a human where it's kind of creeps forward Okay, yeah, should the car creep forward and act like a human when it kind of pauses and looks? Like, or should it just kind of commit? Like, I personally think it should be a hybrid. It should kind of commit, but not super fast. Um, last time we went this direction, this lane right here, it failed the turn. Let's see if it makes this turn. So it's making it this time. Yeah, so instead of doing friction brakes, it did a lot more regen, I'm pretty sure. That that's what this version is supposed to do. So, besides my mess up, we got zero disengagements on this drive. Um, between lows. So it was a very short drive. Um, short, short-ish. Uh, but it had a lot of turns and stuff in it. There's obviously not a lot of traffic. Uh, and a little bit of hesitancy. Now your destination is on the right. But uh, we're going to go park over on this side. Um, yeah, it was great. Last bit of this video is going to be me driving home. This is going to be just kind of a big loop, so it's nothing the same the entire time. Um, but otherwise, we will see you once we're back out. Heading home, everyone. Interesting. The camera looks different. It looks brighter. It's actually fairly... It's um, almost twilight outside. Let's see how it does at the stop sign here. This version seems to, so far, not trying to jinx it, has um, um, fixed the problem when it stops too far back for stop signs. Now turn it. Overall, like my first impressions of this, well, I guess more long term impressions, not first impressions, of 10.8 are positive. Um, there's definitely not anything worse that I can tell um, currently. Our more consistent tests that I've done over and over again will highlight more of those areas that 
have improved or have not improved. Like for instance, that car cut out in front, no brake at all, which is what my car should do. Uh, it did, that blue car right there, um, made it hesitate. Pretty sure that's what made it do that. But not enough to like be annoying or anything. If it did that for every car, yes. But uh, it was thinking, hey, that car might cut out in front of us. And it should be slowing down already for this yellow light. So that's something that, at least for this particular light, was not improved. It should have slowed down sooner. As soon as the right light turned yellow and it was that far back, it needs to just go ahead and start slowing down. Again, every single light, every single stop, it kind of rolls out a little bit. And then like as if you're looking both directions and then goes. I'm not sure why it's waiting so long to get up to speed. So it should already be slowing down for this light and it's not yet. Now it is. So that seems to be worse with this version. Uh, while it's not a bad deceleration, it could be smoother. And that's strictly because it's not slowing soon enough. Like right here, we already can tell this light is red up ahead. It should not even bother accelerating up to full speed and, until, and unless the light turns green. So we already need to be decelerating sooner before the light. See, now it's green. So it could have been, uh, it stayed at 35 mile an hour and then we go to just sped back up to 40 by the time we got to the light. And so now we go up to 45 mile an hour. And so it's up in the speed. This car cutting out in front. Very natural. It did not break at all. No hesitancy. And that's exactly what I would do. Exactly. Go ahead and drop it 5 mile an hour. Seems to be dropping speed a little bit quicker than previous, but that we'll have to do several tests on that. A little bit of hes hesitancy getting into this lane, but it made it. <laughs> that car definitely pulled into my lane, for sure. And not to mention, my car was actually on the very edge of the line for the, that dotted line right there, so it was like we were both at fault for that matter but that, that car is definitely over the line more than I was on the line for sure as you can see what we're gonna do is turn up onto the highway so let's go ahead and put this back in full screen okay so this is gonna be interesting here it needs to stay in this lane and change lanes after the light So it needs to go ahead and get over right here. Perfect. Now turn right to take the Interstate 26 East Ramp. See how it makes this turn. Previous times it seems to cut it a little bit close and that was very good. And very good. And so a lot of turns like that would kind of jam on the brake as it was in the turn and this time it started accelerating out of the turn which is good. And we have no one blocking our way to get onto the highway, so it accelerated very aggressively to get onto the highway. We'll see how it does. Very smooth entrance onto the highway. It seems to be slightly more aware of its the angle that the car is pointing in in position to the other cars when it comes to my high beams. It, it, when, what I mean by that is the high beams are on until the car aligns with the other cars. Like right here, with the, it's a poor example. I turn them on when it shouldn't have. Um, I, my preference is just to keep them off on this road because there's so many turns that it just goes on and off constantly because you go around a blind turn and like, hey, no cars, and all of a sudden a car shows up and you're blinding them. So it's just best right here on this road to turn them off. Okay. So, a little bit 
this is smoother, I'd say, getting off the highway, but let's see how it decelerates here. Very good deceleration getting off the highway. Waiting for high speed, there is no high speed cross traffic. I'm gonna press the accelerator until it's good to go. I'm holding the accelerator to keep it from like jerking back and forth until they fix the speed limit. I would so wish we could submit on um, speed limits to get fixed. It would take all of six months for crowdsourced data to fix speed limits um, like that. And like 90% of map data issues would be resolved. Like if we could just crowdsource and just fix those issues. Like once you get like someone that's considered trusted, like, you know, uh, anyone who does the, the beta score or whatever, uh, is done, is done the full self driving for weeks and not had any issues, they probably can be trusted. And of course, if they've submitted, you know, like five things and they're all accurate, and been verified and then they're probably trusted you know just spot check them periodically make sure they're not doing anything crazy um but yeah that's gonna be in the end of this video everyone um i can't really see big changes at 10.8 so far but there are definitely good um, improvements is what i want to see continue is two steps forward one step back um if you have any questions for me put them down in the comments down below and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. And um, I suppose this will come out Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye.